Okay guys, sorry. It's been a little bit since I posted a video and I actually promised you this early in the year. Very sorry about that. Um, I had a lot of personal things going on. I've been seeing a surgeon for my shoulder. I'm probably going to need to have a rotator cuff surgery. So trying to do this all myself was a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, and I did the whole thing top to bottom as you're going to see here. So first off, let me shut up and I'm going to make sure there's no background music. This is on turbo. You hear it? I'm actually going to insert a clip of the outside unit, how loud that is. So now you got a taste of how loud or how much noise this thing makes, which in my opinion, it's nothing, especially in a garage. But if you're doing this for your home, this is still pretty pretty quiet and it's, it feels really good. I'm, I'm still kind of sweaty and you see the ring around my collar here from earlier. I just stopped futzing around with this and turned this unit on. All right, let's get into the installation process. Here's all the time lapse of me putting together. This is again over a course of a couple of weeks because I had to stop for a couple things here and there. And again, I did this from start to finish. So comes in two boxes. Um, I bought this from Costco online. I'm a Costco member. And it was the cheapest that I could find online for this unit. This is the Gen 4 uh, Mr. Cool DIY 12K ETU 120 volt system. So mileage and prices may vary depending on which units you buy but i wanted the gen 4 for the better sear rating on the electricity we'll cover that later but yeah it came in two boxes one for the air handler unit one for the actual condenser uh, these were not very heavy um, even the shipping boxes so i'd say the condenser probably about 35 maybe 40 pounds the air handler unit is about 15 maybe that 12 it's pretty lightweight right so first up here, we're seeming futzing with the electrical. I, this section here where I pulled the drywall off and the insulation, that was done years ago when uh, I had an actual electrician come in and wire in my pool and pool heater uh, for my wife. I had to have that done per code because I wasn't gonna mess with those things, especially 60 foot electrical run, burying the line and all that other crap. So, and because of where I live, everything has to be in hard conduit. I can't use Romax, can't do any of that stuff. So I kind of cheated. On the other side of this wall where I'm working is the main AC condenser for my house, the disconnect box, uh, other me various mechanicals like my internet service and phone lines and all that other good stuff. Um, so yeah, I just cheated where I wanted the unit. Actually worked out very well for me. It's not even six feet from my electrical panel. In fact, I'd say it's like three feet at most. So. You see me screwing around here with electrical. I'm not going to the details of how I wired the electrical because I'm not a certified electrician and I don't want you guys suing me if you screwed something up. Right? If you do not know what you're doing, hire an electrician to do this for you. Right? Um, moving on to the outside, I hooked up a disconnect box because I need that per code as well. Um, highly recommended even if you're doing electrical yourself and you feel that you don't need it, you still should have a disconnect box because there is no on off switch for anything unless you're hitting a breaker. And then on top of it, somebody accidentally flips the brake around while you're working on it. It's <laughs> it's just bad for business. So always have a disconnect box. Um, I wired that all in. Luckily, it mounts right where I need it to, and it's super close to everything else. Uh, then next up is drilling a hole through the wall. They provide you this nice little wood or cardboard templates. It tells you where everything is for you to mount, so you know where your studs are. If you don't have studs in that location, you can use wall or drywall anchors. They say that that is sufficient for this device. Um, I put in four drywall anchors and then I put in two studs or two, two uh, con or construction screws into studs just because I wanted that peace of mind, even though they said that the drywall anchors are more than sufficient. Um, then you're drilling through the, the wall. You want to drill at a downward angle from the instructions so that the water uh, that collects in the unit can drain properly through its uh, drain tube. 
and then you put your outside cover on, feed it all through. You're, you got to bend your copper lines that are on the back of the unit to a 90 degree you know, angle to it so that it fits through the wall. And of course, then you don't see them. And then once it's outside the wall, you got to very gently bend those uh, copper lines so that they don't crease or kink, create a hole. You know, put the bend those down so they follow the outside wall, right? Um, not shown in any of the stuff is the beauty cover that you're supposed to buy later or buy with the unit. It's an additional cost. Uh, I haven't ordered it yet, but I'm gonna buy one and put it in place later. Uh, I still got a lot of cleanup, a lot of little finishing touches to do. So with the electrical done, the units hung, right? Putting it through the wall. You go to the outside. You got to mount the condenser unit. Um, I mounted this to a concrete pad. Uh, you've, if you're doing a concrete pad, you need to have concrete anchors. They do sell fiberglass pads for this type of thing. I don't think this unit is heavy enough to, to, to do that, plus it's a little bit of an odd shape, it being tall and skinny. So you know, it's not, it doesn't have a lot of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Not a lot of stability, because it's 17 inches, I think, is the from one mounting point to the other other or maybe it's 11 inches but it's it's super short so i recommend concrete anchors bolting it down that way it doesn't vibrate and move because there will be vibrations um, once you're all said and done with that you hook up the electrical on the outside of the unit uh, the instructions are pretty self-explanatory you hook up your lines your electrical then you hook it up to your uh, disconnect box i bought a uh, three foot waterproof whip get to my disconnect box because the disconnect box was pretty close. I'll cover that in a little bit for the pros, cons, and stuff that you do need with the unit. Um, then you hook up your copper lines. Um, I battled with this a little bit and this is going to be one of my cons later on. But once you have that all done, you uh, use this little nifty Mr. Cool uh, Allen wrench head that they you know, put the little marketing on. You crack open the valves, get some uh, sudsy spray water, Spray it on there, all your fittings, make sure that they don't leak, right? Because um, the refrigerant is self-contained in the unit. So if you have a leak, eh, you're kind of up Shit's Creek. And we're gonna cover that here just in a little bit. Um, aside from that, wrap your lines, get it all nice and looking pretty. You wanna spray foam or use caulk to seal the outside uh, connectors or the outside covers so that they don't allow bugs and stuff into it. Um, Mr. Cool does give you um, sealing clay and uh, different types of uh, wraps, plastic, or, you know, uh, insulation wraps so that you can plug up all these holes and make everything watertight. Okay, we're going to get to the pros and cons of this and everything that you need to install this unit because it doesn't come with everything you need, right? So, first up, uh, you need a concrete pad, a fiberglass pad if you're going to go that route. I don't recommend it personally, but you guys do you. Or you can get the wall unit or wall mount unit or wall mount hangers, right, and mount it to the exterior walls. Um, if I could have, I probably would have went that route. That's just, just the way physically my house is laid out with my garage and everything seen. All that stuff can be seen from my front uh, yard and the sidewalk, so you, you just... I didn't want this big obtrusive unit hanging off the side of my wall and everybody looking at it. So I chose to hide it behind all this uh, shrubbery that my wife planted. Okay. Um, aside from that, you need a hole saw. Hole saw, excuse me. Now here's the cardboard template that they provide you. Here, you guys can read it. 90 millimeters, 3.54 inches, right? Um, I didn't have a hole saw for that, I don't buy one. When you go to install it, you have to drill at a downward angle. I'll get it all the way to the outside. You'll need a utility knife. You will need electrical tape. You will need a disconnect box if you're doing the electrical yourself. You will need a uh, waterproof whip to go from that disconnect box to the actual condenser unit outside. Um, you will need concrete anchors if you're going to um, mount it to a concrete pad. I think I covered everything that you actually need, right? Okay, so let's get to the pros and cons. So pro number one, <laughs> it's quiet. 
don't know if you can hear it over me in the background music that I've got playing in here, but super quiet. This is turbo mode. The actual outside unit, I showed you that clip earlier, it's, it's, it's really quiet. So uh, I would say it's actually very easy to install if you take the electrical component and the concrete out of the equation. You could probably get this done in four to six hours. Um, even with doing concrete, you're going to add a day to it because you want that concrete set up and cure. And you got to build your you know, box and mix it and put it in place. Um, but it only took me two hours to build the frame, mix up concrete, put it down, let it set, come back the next day, break the, mold, the, the frame off of it, and you're, you're all set. Uh, to do the electrical, it took me probably about two hours, and that's just because you know, Alex said I'm not an electrician and I, I know what I'm doing for the most part. I had to read up on some code laws just to make sure because I don't want to you know, flag my house as something as dangerous and I don't want to burn my house down. But I, I took my time, I was a little cautious with it. Um, but yeah, it only took me about two hours at most. Uh, depending on where your electrical box is and where your disconnect box is and all that other stuff, you can go Romex or Conduit or all those different things are all going to play into that type of equation. Okay. Um, other pros, it's super lightweight, right? Like I said, the AC condenser unit is 40 pounds. Not, not heavy at all. This 12, 15 pounds maybe. I, I don't, didn't measure it, but it's, it felt very lightweight. Uh, the fourth gen unit is very energy efficient. Do a nice little sear rating right there, 22.5 for the electrical or for the AC, I should say. For heating, is a little different. It's nine for that. And beware of this. Um, this is a heat pump, and that's actually what an AC unit is, is a heat pump. Um, but it works in reverse to do heat. So it'll actually take the outside ambient heat from the outside and push it inside, even down to, I think it's negative nine or negative 13. It's one of the two. It's, it's in the marketing material, guys. You can look it up online. Um, but it does also have a heating coil built in the side of it, just kind of like my other electrical, electrical heater here. So I don't know how well it's going to work. I'll do a follow-up video later on so you guys you know, see how, how good it's working. Um, it's got a nifty little remote control. I like that. Uh, you can actually set this to be the thermostat too. So it's got a thermostat built onto it. You can see it's reading 67 degrees there. But you can tell it this is the thermostat. So if you move this to a warmer or colder place in the room, it, the machine's going to operate off of this thermostat. Right. Um, I have to test to see if this will actually work from inside my house because if it does, that'll be even a bigger bonus. Uh, all right, other pros. Uh, low cost. Like I said, this unit is 1500 bucks. Not bad at all for a heat and AC unit. To give you an idea, this 220 electric heater that I've been using as my primary source of heat for many, many years. About 200 and something dollars, right? Plus, it runs off at 220, so it's about 60 cents an hour to run. This unit should be heating and cooling, and it's also got a fan unit that you can keep on even when it's not heating or cooling, so it's pushing air, which is one of the biggest problems with this electric heater that I've got is once it reaches its thermal overload or set temperature, the fan shuts off, you can't turn it on. So you may have heat in one zone, nice and warm, but on the other side of the room, garage, whatever you're going to classify it as, it may be colder than balls. So, cold as balls. So, these are all good things that I think that are big pros for this type of unit. Um, the cons. Let me get into this. So, this is not what everybody says to you and what you see on all the videos. So, the cons. you got to know how to lay concrete if you're going to use a concrete pad. Um, if you don't, you got to hire somebody to do that for you. That adds to the cost. And then it doesn't become so much of a DIY unit thing anymore, right? Same thing with the electrical. I priced this uh, with uh, calling a couple friends and calling a couple shops and even some HVAC companies because I wanted them to price out certain things. So I was looking at the cheapest $600 to run three feet of electrical for one way. But that was including a disconnect box and electrical whip and all those other things included all of that. So time and materials, $600. Not a bad price, but that's almost half of what this unit cost. So kind of no brainer for me to do it since I know what I'm kind of know what I'm doing. All right. Um, 
the other cons to it is since this is a DIY unit, no HVAC company will service it. You gotta be careful with this, right? So if you are not mechanically inclined, electrically inclined, you, you, you don't know what you're doing, buy one of these units from an actual HVAC company that will warranty and service both the manufacturing or the manufacturer's warranty as well as the installation of it, right? So to give you an idea, I called up a couple HVAC companies and I was looking at the Mitsubishis and the Suncools and a couple other models that were in comp comparison. I don't know why I couldn't say that. Comparison to this actual unit, 120, about 12K BTUs because it's four and one square feet in this garage. Um, they were anywhere from three to $7,000, depending on the installations, right? The only pro to that is if you ever needed to recharge the system, if there's a problem with it, you just call them and they come out and they fix it for their service fees. You guys make that decision on your own, right? Like I said, I'm kind of, I like to do the DIY stuff. You see what I do on my channel all the time. I'm in the doing everything myself and if I don't know how to do it, I learn how to do it. 1500 hours. It was 1540 or something with tax and shipping. Not bad. My disconnect box, the electrical whip, the uh, disconnect box was like $30, a $20 fuse breaker was like $12, the electrical whip, the waterproof whip was like $6. Um, I don't think I had to buy anything else, I had everything else here, but you know, other tools that you may need, you know, a couple wrenches, the hole saw, I had to buy a hole saw because I didn't have that specific size, that was $12, and it wasn't bad. Um, you know, electrical tools, I have those, but you know, a couple bucks here and there, screwdrivers, crescent wrenches. You know, it's, it's not an expensive install, guys. Okay, uh, I think that wraps it up. Uh, like I said, I'll do a uh, follow-up video on this in the winter, see how well it actually heats this garage by itself. Um, like I said, I still have my electric heater. I'll probably take it down just so it's not blocking anything, but I'll still keep it. And then I've got my propane heater as well to help supplement it if I need it, but uh, hopefully I don't, fingers crossed. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions about the installation process, what I was doing, uh, my electrical, I'm not going there, um, drop them in the comments below. If you would, hit like, subscribe. Welcome to the channel for people that have just uh, found this because of Mr. Cool and DIY and all of this stuff. Thanks for watching, appreciate it, and I'll catch you on the next video, guys. Thanks.